powerful, impactful, life-changing. This is the teaching ministry of Apostle Faith Manoeira, where supernatural things are happening through the anointed Word of God. This prolific preacher and dynamic teacher of God's Word is changing lives all over the world. Are you ready? Because your life will never be the same. Your success is directly related to your submission to God's Word. We are not here to do what we think or feel. We are here to do what God's Word has approved. If you're going to succeed in life, God must come first in everything you do. Faith in God does not fail because its origin is God. Here is Apostle Faith Man Owen. to this life-changing broadcast and I believe that God's word will be coming first and it's going to empower you to move in the direction of his will. Life in God's will is the greatest place we can ever be. The best place you can be in life is to be in the will of God and the will of God becomes the very platform for assessing the things of the Spirit. There are spiritual resources, there are spiritual treasures that God wants us to experience, but that can only be a reality when we function from the will of God. And the will of God is the pathway to deploying the great potential that God has placed within us. A person can be gifted but if they fail to function from the will of God, that gifting cannot reach its full potential. So today we're talking about spiritual habits. You know, habits are very powerful. We could have positive habits, we could have negative habits. People are known for their habits. And if your habit is based on God's word, it's going to be a habit that is going to bless you, that is going to open doors for you, that is going to cause great things to happen around you. Today I'll be talking about spiritual habits. What are your spiritual habits? Are you the kind of person that you are passionate about the things of the Spirit? Are you a person who is more interested in the things that glorify God? We have been told that in, if we keep doing the same things, for 21 days, if we keep doing the same thing, we'll keep the same attitude for 21 days, it's going to be a habit. And if we stop doing it for 21 days, we can break off that habit. So today, we're looking at spiritual habits. Now, one of the spiritual habits we need to cultivate is to develop a spiritual passion. Being passionate about the things of the Spirit. It doesn't just come to people. You develop spiritual passion. Passion for the things of the kingdom. Passion for the things that glorify God. Passion for the things that are consistent with the will of God. That you can easily respond to the things of the Spirit without you being pushed around or maybe someone trying to encourage you to motivate you or to say to you oh you gotta do this you gotta do that when you develop passion for the things of the spirit it has to bring spiritual acceleration you, you can accelerate in your growth because there is a passion that you've cultivated you know, a lot of people want to be on fire for God. They want to be strong. They want to be committed. They want to be diligent in the things of the Spirit. Unknowing to them, it is being cultivated. We have to cultivate it. We have to develop it. It doesn't come to us natural. The things of the Spirit doesn't come to people in a natural way. You know, some people think that, well, it's just going to happen. No, it's not just going to happen. You have to develop your passion. That was why Jesus said, Blessed are those who do tasks after righteousness, for they shall be filled. So if the desire is not there, that simply means you cannot experience it. So you have to think about developing passion for the things of the Spirit. How do we develop passion for the things of the Spirit? A. When we make the kingdom 
a priority in our thinking. If the kingdom of God is your priority, like Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, Matthew 6, 33, he said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. If the kingdom is your priority in your thinking, in your action, in your conversation, it is an indication that you are developing a spiritual passion for the things that glorifies God. You know, some people have passion in the wrong direction. But God wants us to have passion in the direction of his will. Because passion in the direction of his will is the passion that produces the God kind of result. So if, if I truly want to develop strong spiritual habits, I need to have passion for the things of the Spirit. Now, there is developing passion for God's Word. You know, there are people who they, they, they want more of excitement. They want it to excite them. They want to, you know, things that excite them, but they are not passionate about the things of the Spirit. But God wants us to be passionate about His Word. And it takes discipline, I can call it spiritual discipline, to stay with the Word of God. It takes spiritual discipline to be a person who consistently with the Word. A lot of people don't read the Word of God consistently. They, they, they see God's Word as something they read once in a while. But you can cultivate a habit where you read God's Word consistently. Yeah, consistently is your way of life. You, you, you can't go two days without reading God's word. You can't go throughout the day without having a time to meditate on God's word because you have developed the passion to fellowship with the word. And because you have developed the passion to fellowship with the word, it is going to be difficult for you to stay without doing it because it has become part of your way of life. You know, when God said to Joshua, in Joshua 1 verse 8, he said, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but thou shalt meditate during day and night. You know, what, what God trying to do to Joshua was telling him, you got to cultivate a habit of meditating on my word. It has to be your way of life. It has to be your way of doing things, because it, when it becomes your habit, it means it's going to be the very foundation for your faith life. You know, a lot of people want to experience spiritual stability. They, they want to experience spiritual growth, but they are not developing the habits that will lead them to spiritual growth. It doesn't just come to people. Spiritual habits is not something that people just have. A lot of people have dirty habits, dirty attitude, but it takes someone with a discipline with a vision to cultivate spiritual habits, habits of uh, spending more time. You know, I was praying one time, I said, Lord, my greatest desire is to spend more of my time with you in the place of prayer, in the place of reading the word. This is my great desire, God. I, I want to spend more, my, more of my time with you. More of my time fellowshipping with the word. More of my time listening to the word of God as I can be effective in the things of the spirit. Spiritual habit is habit of listening to the word of God. You, you, you cultivate a habit of listening that you, you don't want to stay any day pass by without you listening to the word of God. You have developed that kind of habit where you consistently want to listen to the word. You, you, you don't want to stay without the word of God. You have made a decision to listen to teachings of God's word. You have made a decision to meditate on the word of God. You, you, you have made a decision to spend time praying. It has become your way of life. Habits don't happen overnight. It is by decision we create habits. It is by decision we develop habits. It doesn't just happen overnight. The habit of, of preaching the gospel. You know, a lot of people are Christians, but they don't, they're not passionate when it comes to preaching the word of God. They have not cultivated the habit. This, Jesus said, my, my desire is to do the will of my Father. Is to do the will of him who has sent me. 
So you see, Jesus always is preaching, he's ministering to people. He cultivated it. He, he decided to do it. And if we don't make the decision to do the things of the Spirit, we cannot cultivate the habits. So when it comes to cultivating spiritual habits, there are key things that are important. Number one, discipline to do. The discipline to do does not come natural. We, we need to, Paul said, I don't want to be a preacher and be cast away. So I bring my body under subjection. Because if you don't bring your body under subjection, you can't do the things of the Spirit. This is why the scripture established in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. He said, be not con don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, the renewing of the mind prepares us to receive the things of the Spirit. The renewing of the mind is the key to spiritual progress. When we renew our mind with God's word, it leads to spiritual progress. The, the, the only way we can make progress in the things of the Spirit, one of the ways we make progress in the things of the Spirit, is when we renew our mind with God's word. Number two, when we put the kingdom of God first, you know, we put the kingdom of God first, we renew our mind with God's word, and we decide that our action will be a reflection of the word of God. We decide that our action is going to be a reflection of God's word. So we have to be disciplined to bring our body under subjection. In here, sorry, in, in Romans 12, verse 1, uh, Romans 12, verse 1, I'd like us to look at that scripture. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1, thank you, Holy Spirit. In Romans 12, verse 1, Look at what God's word said. He said, I beseech you, dear, for brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as if you present your bodies a living sacrifice. You present your body. Who's going to do the presenting? We are the ones to do the presenting. You're the one to present your body. If you don't present your body before God, your body will be moving in a direction. And your spirit is going another direction. There are people, their body is going this direction. The, the, their spirit is going this direction. So there is a, what is called internal confusion. There is a confusion because the body and the spirit is not aligning together. And this is the reason why we need to transform our mind with God's word. Because the, the mind is like, a, uh, like the mediator between the spirit and the body. The mind is like the mediator between the spirit and the body. So if the mind is renewed with God's word, the spirit will take the lead. But if the mind is not renewed with God's word, the body will take the lead, which is the flesh will take the lead. So this is why Paul said, don't be conformed to this world, but be a transformed by the renewing of your mind. The condition, the spiritual condition of your mind will determine the direction your body will follow or will determine the direction the spirit will follow. So your spirit wants to take the lead, your body wants to take the lead, in between you have the mind. So whatever the mind is saying is what the body and the spirit will be doing. The spirit will follow. The mind will, but the body will follow. So if you renew your mind with God's word, it will always listen to the spirit man. It will always be in cooperation with the spirit man. But if you don't renew your mind with the word of God, your, your mind is not renewed. It will always be following the, 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 the feeling of the body. Whatever the body is feeling is following, is, is moving in that direction. So the condition of the mind will determine where the student, where the, whether it's aligning with the spirit or is aligning with the body. So this is why it's important that you consistently expose your mind to the word of God because your mind is made up of your will, uh, your, your emotion, you know, your will, your emotion, it, the, the, the major components of your mind. So, 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 so it's important that we begin to renew our mind. It's important to renew your mind. You know, man is a spirit. He has a soul. He lives in the body. He lives in the body. 
The, 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 your, your, your soul is made up of your mind, your will, and your emotion. Yes, I got it right right now. Your soul is made up of your mind, your will, and your emotion. And your mind plays a major part in your emotional stability. If you're going to be stable emotionally, your mind has a lot to do. So when it comes to developing spiritual habits, you need to consistently renew your mind with God's word as your mind can respond to the character of your spirit. As your mind can respond to the character of your spirit, your spirit is already perfect. But if your mind is not renewed with God's word, your action will not reflect the perfection of your human spirit. And this is why we need to meditate on God's word as our mind and our spirit will align together that we'll always be moving in the direction of the will of God. This is the key to effective living. This is the key to productive faith. This is the key to developing a character that is consistent with the word of God. This is the key. To developing a character that is consistent with the word of God. So if I want to develop a character that is consistent with God's word, I need to renew my mind with the word of God. I need to expose my mind with God's word. That helps me to think in the direction of the will of God. When my mind is exposed with God's word, it helps me to function in the will of God. So one of the keys to developing a spiritual habit is to cultivate spiritual discipline. That you are able to establish boundaries and this is not what to do. There is what is called, what maybe one of the teachings I'm going to be teaching on spiritual purity. Pursuing the, the purity of the soul, the purity of the mind, the purity of the mind. And, and that becomes a reality when we consistently fellowship with the word of God that we, it, it, the Bible talk about casting down every imagination. Things that wants to exalt itself above the knowledge of the will of God. So we need to cast down this imagination, these thoughts, this ungodly thought, you know, that is coming to our mind. You know, several years ago, when I gave my life to Jesus Christ, more than 21 years ago, I was having this thought, these negative thoughts coming to my mind because I was told if you're born again, you, you're not going to have those thoughts. So when I got to the local church that I was then, I asked one of the leaders, I said, I, I still have this mind, these thoughts coming to me, these evil thoughts coming to me. And the man said something to me, he said, the birds can fly, but don't let them perch on you. So when I heard that, I said, the birds can fly. Those, that simply means the thoughts will come, but don't let it, don't, don't meditate on those thoughts. And the reason why we need to renew our mind with God's word, it helps us to judge the thought process. You see, you cannot truly judge your thoughts when you lack the revelation of the will of God. The revelation of God's will helps you to judge every thought in the light of God's word. You see, if I'm not, if I don't have the knowledge of the word of God, I can easily accept anything I hear. I can easily accept anything I see. I can easily accept anything that happens around me because with the knowledge of God's word, I will have a nice spiritual gait. When I, when I talk about spiritual gates, this when you talk about gates in the natural, you know that a, a, a gate is kept in your home, is, is put in the, a, a, when people come to your house, the first thing they see is your gate. Now that gate means a defense. And that gate determine, will determine who comes to that gate. So when people knock at the gate, or maybe they use the bell at the gate, will come and ask, who are you? If you have a guard or a security person, or, or maybe you have a security cameras that see people who are at the gate, you know whether it's the person you want to see or the person you don't want to see. The revelation knowledge of God's word serves as a spiritual gate, determining what comes in and what doesn't come in. It determines that sickness and disease cannot come in because you have a revelation that he took my infirmity. So you have a, a defense. So when sickness and disease is trying to come in, you say, you can't come in here because I am delivered. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am a partaker of the divine nature. You see, without the revelation of the will of God, we cannot understand the purpose of God. We cannot understand what God expects from us and what we are expecting from God or what we can expect from God. So that was why Paul prayed that God will grant you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Now listen to this. When you cultivate a habit of you know, spending more time with God is a habit. 
you know, spending more time with God than you want to spend time like spending time praying for one hour or spending time praying for two hours or spending time praying for three hours, depending on the strength of your spirit, how you are able to go and the leading of the spirit you're having. Now, when it comes to developing spiritual discipline, there is what is called spiritual submission. To the degree you submit to the word of God will determine how you respond to the things of the spirit. To the degree you submit to God's word, your, your, your degree of submission to God's word determines your attitude, determines your character, and also determines your faith operation. To the degree you submit to the word of God. A lot of people could hear God's word, but when it comes to submission, everybody is not submitting at the same level. Everyone is not submitting at the same level. Everyone is not yielding to the Spirit of God at the same level. To the degree you submit to God's word will determine how you cultivate spiritual habits. There are those who don't pray because they have not cultivated the habit of praying. There are those who don't fast because they have not cultivated the habit of fasting. Those things don't come natural to people. There are those who they pray in tongues, but it's once in a while because they have not cultivated the habit of the, the habit of praying in the spirit. There are those who don't meditate on the word of God because they have not cultivated the habit. For habit to be established, you have to do something for a long period of time. For habits to be cultivated, you have to do something for a long period of time. If I consistently keep praying in tongues, keep praying in tongues for 21 days, I just keep praying in tongues, I have developed the habit. So it's easy for it to flow because I've cultivated the habit. If I, if I am a person who likes to give tithes, who likes to give offering, if I consistently do it, then I develop the habit. It has become a way of life for me to consistently give. It has become, if I, I love to teach, if I, if I keep teaching the word of God, I develop the habits. I keep teaching the word of God. You know, unknown to most people, they think that certain spiritual things will not fall on them. No, it doesn't fall on you. You develop the habit by doing it consistently. If you want to have a strong prayer life, you develop the habit by praying always, by praying consistently. Then you build the habit of a strong prayer life. It, it's not going to come to you as a gift. There are things that like having a, a prayer life is not a gift. It's something you cultivate. A prayer life is not a gift. Re there is no gift of reading the word of God. There is no gift of reading the word of God. There may be gift of teaching, but there is no gift of reading. There is no gift of meditation. You have to cultivate the gift. It's not going to come to you natural. This is why a lot of people say, oh, I'm not getting it. Oh, it's not working for me. Because they think it's going to come to them natural. No, you have to read the word. You have to discipline yourself. You, you know, you have to discipline yourself to read the word as you can be able to flow in the things of the spirit. Spiritual habits are the foundation for strong spiritual Manifestation. If you want to see strong manifestation, great manifestation, that's the right word. If you want to see great manifestations of the things of the spirit, if you want to see strong, if you want to have a strong spiritual life, then you have to cultivate spiritual habits. You can't have a strong spiritual life without cultivating the habits to build them. That will build those. That will build it up. You need to cultivate the habit. You know, there was something I was doing many. Uh, it's maybe two years ago, one year ago, I, I spent time and I prayed for like three hours. I was doing it, praying for three hours. But before I realized, I noticed I was so busy with so many things, I couldn't do that anymore. I pray, but I don't pray after the three hours. Then God started helping me. I started coming back to that habit of praying for three hours. Then I learned something. I learned that if you don't have spiritual discipline, you cannot maintain a great prayer life. You have to be disciplined to shut everything down to do it. Because if you think it's going to be natural, friend, you are just, <laughs> it's a joke. It's not going to happen that way. So I noticed that when I was doing that and when I wasn't able to do it anymore, because I was carried away with so many other things I was doing. So I wasn't having the, 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 the time to build it. Then I noticed if I don't have spiritual priority, 
I cannot develop great spiritual habits. So there has to be a spiritual priority. So what is your spiritual priority? Do you have the priority to read the word of God for one hour? You shut down the phone, you shut down everything, and you read it for one hour. Without spiritual priority and spiritual discipline, we cannot develop great spiritual habits. It cannot become a lifestyle. Because you want it to be a lifestyle, the things you want to see as a lifestyle, you need to have a spiritual priority. You need to have spiritual discipline. You need to have what is called spiritual submission. You have to submit yourself and say, I want to do this. Paul said, I bring my body under subjection. If you don't bring your body under subjection, it's not going to work. I've been doing this for more than 21 years. I've learned so many things. You know, as a, as a minister of the gospel, a lot of people want me to minister to them. That's my job, to preach the gospel, to teach people, to cancel, to minister to people. But I need to take care of myself. Because if you don't take care of yourself, you'll be, you'll be wear out spiritually. You, 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 you become dry. And spiritual dryness is when we begin to neglect our spiritual responsibility to develop ourselves. This is why you see a minister falling into adultery. Yes, listen, no matter how powerful the preacher is, if they don't have spiritual discipline, they will fall into adultery, they will fall into drinking, they will fall into stealing, I'm telling you. They will fall because the things of the Spirit is something you have to do regularly to be in the right shape. You know, some of you want to have a good shape. You want to do exercise, you know. You want to do exercise. If you don't have discipline, you won't do exercise. If you don't have discipline, you won't have the right shape. So you keep going to the gym. I know one of my son was telling me, Apostle, I went to gym. You know, he used to tell me I went to the gym. You know, you know, he wants to keep right shape. He wants to keep right shape. So he keep going to the gym. The same thing that you have to do with your spirit, man. You have to do with your soul. You have to do with your body. Listen to this. Your spirit needs God's word to be able to be sensitive to receive. Your spirit needs God's word. Your soul needs the word of God to be able to support the, your, your spirit man to carry out the will of God. So if your soul, this is what happened in the realm of the spirit. You know, I, I, I had a vision this morning about my mom. And my mom is uh, almost going to maybe on her way to 80 years. And I was having this vision of my mom, of my mother. So when I had that vision, I started praying. Now, my spirit saw the vision. My soul have to wake up my body to say, hey, it's time to pray. You have to pray. If you don't train your soul, what, when the spirit will pass the information across to the soul, the soul will not be able to pass the information to the body. So the body is waiting for instruction from the soul. And the, the, the soul receives instruction from the spirit. So this is why when you train your soul with the word of God, like Romans said, Romans 12, verse 3 said, be not conformed to this world, but be a transformed. So as you train your soul with the word of God, your soul will be quick to receive from the spirit. As you receive from the spirit man, he pass the information quickly to the body. Because this body has been trained to respond to the things of the spirit, then you start praying. That is when you see yourself praying, Mashaka, blah, blah, blah. because information has moved from the spirit, it has descended to the soul, then the soul has acted. But the soul cannot act if the soul is not renewed with God's word. It cannot pass it across to the body because the soul is well connected to the body. The soul is connected to the body. Man is a spirit. He has a soul. The soul lives in the body. So because he lives in the body, it's like the memory of the body. The soul is like the memory of the body. So whatever is installed in the soul is what the body will play out. That was why the scripture said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. He said, it's not what we eat that defies us, it's what comes out of us that defies us. So this is the reason you need to renew your mind. As it helps you to cultivate a spiritual habit that you're always there.
When, when things are going on, in one second you know it. In one second you know it. In one second you know it. You know that this is what God is saying. This is why the scripture said to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because being spiritually minded simply means that your soul, your soul is always going as for the things of the spirit. Your soul has been positioned in the realities of the things of the spirit of God. Is ready to listen to God's word. Is ready to flow with the word of God. To be spiritually minded. To be spiritually minded. If you don't put your mind on the things of the spirit, if you don't focus your mind on the things of the spirit, you cannot be spiritually minded. That was why Jesus said, Seek ye effects the kingdom of God and his righteousness in all these things will be added to you. People of God, listen to this. Cultivating a great spiritual habit will take spiritual discipline. We take spiritual desire. Desire is so important when it comes to cultivating spiritual habits. Desire. Desire is so important. Desire. You need to have desire. You need to be hungry. Don't lose your hunger for the things of the spirit. It is the foundation for cultivating spiritual habits. It's the foundation. Cultivate the habits. The habit of reading the word, the habit of praying, the habit of, of listening to God's word, subject your body. Nobody's going to do this for you. This is your job. You get to do this for yourself. You need to renew your mind daily. Don't say, well, I've been listening to apostle. Well, I've been listening to this teaching. Oh, I don't, need it. I don't need it anymore. You need to hear the word of God daily. You need to hear the word of God daily. This morning I was in my car. I was changing the, the messages. I was listening to, I decided to listen to Dr. T.L. Osborne this morning. I was listening to Dr. T.L. Osborne. He has gone home to be with the Lord, but I was listening to his teaching. He was ministering. The teaching he did for uh, when he was alive, but then Kenneth Hagen was alive, he, you know, he, he was in his camp meeting. So I was listening to that teaching he did many years ago. He said, listening to God's word helps you to develop the right frame of mind for the activities of the spirit. Spiritual habits are important. The habit of praying, the habit of reading the word. You must learn to set your spiritual priority in order. Wake up with an expectation to do something spiritual every day. Wake up with it. If you know you're going to your office on time, you wake up on time to pray. You wake up on time to read the word. You know when is the best time for you. You learn to work at your time. If it's afternoon, is the best time for you to pray. Make it afternoon. Whatever is the best time for you, learn to cultivate a spiritual habit for where you're going to. Let me say this to you. Developing a great spiritual capacity begins with a strong spiritual habit. A positive spiritual habit. Developing a strong spiritual capacity begins with a positive spiritual habit. For that reason, you need to meditate on the word. You need to spend time with the word of God as you can be able to develop yourself. I believe that this teaching has come to you and is going to empower you to be able to make progress in your calling, in your assignment. If you're a pastor, if you're a church worker, you're a leader, you need to take this to you and your people. Examine the scriptures I've shared. Examine the things I've taught and meditate on the word of God. Develop yourself. Build up yourself. This is how you become more productive. This is how you become more effective. Strong spiritual habit is the foundation for effective faith work. I want to say it again. I said strong spiritual habit. Developing the right spiritual habit is the foundation for effective faith work. If your faith is going to be effective, if your faith is going to be productive, you need to develop the right spiritual habit. The habit of walking in love. The habit of forgiving people. You need to develop it. It should flow easily with you to forgive people, to walk in love, to walk by faith. It should be your way of life. The habit of speaking the word of God. You need to develop the habit of speaking God's word. This is a spiritual habit we need to cultivate. The habit of walking by faith. Some people walk by faith this season. Next season they are not walking by faith. You need to cultivate the habit of living by faith. You have to cultivate the habit of trusting God. 
trusting no matter what you're going through you choose to trust god it's a habit if you don't develop the habit you trust god in this season next season you didn't trust him you trust god for this you know so we have to cultivate the habit where we can boldly speak like the psalmist the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he cultivated that habit of trusting god to a point he become part of his expression this is how your faith develop this is how your faith become effective this is how you win in life if you're watching this broadcast today I want to let you know that Jesus loves you and so do I. Now, if you're watching the broadcast and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you cannot truly cultivate spiritual habits without knowing Jesus as the Lord of your life. For you to, uh, for you to cultivate the right spiritual habits, you need to know Jesus as the Lord of your life. You know the scripture established in Colossians 3.16, it said, let the word of God dwell in you richly. You know, let the word of God dwell in you richly. You know, it's so important that the word must dwell in you richly. And Paul was talking in 2 Timothy 2.15, the key verse the, in that a portion of it he said he said he said to timothy paul said to timothy he said study to show yourself approved study develop the habit of studying you know he was encouraging that you can rightly divide the word of truth you cannot rightly divide the word of truth if you don't study the word this is how you get strong this is how you get effective this is how you do no matter what is coming against you in life if you have the spiritual strength you never to make the progress that is desired for that to be a reality maybe you're watching this broadcast you don't know jesus you can say this after me lord jesus i confess with my mouth i believe in my heart that god have raised jesus from the dead thank you father for saving me amen if you pray the prayer with me it means you're born again and the spirit of god is going to lead you from this day forward and you're going to make a great progress in your work of faith now i want to encourage you to consider uh watching me on finish work tv finish work tv is a ministry on the cutting edge that is changing the lives of people all over the world you know we have amazing testimonies from different leaders from different parts of the world every day people who will share their testimonies of how god's world is changing them so i just want to encourage you to keep watching finishworktv.com and you will not remain the same and also i want to encourage you to consider subscribing to my youtube channel is fitman teaching on youtube i like you to tell more people about my youtube channel send an email to your brother to your sister to your friends tell people it's time to listen to the word of god that has potential to transform your life so you can subscribe to my youtube channel is faith man teaching on youtube is faith man teachings on youtube when you subscribe you'll be able to have videos coming to you every day because every day my people around the world is uploading videos and helping more people to receive the word of god and also i want to encourage you today to consider partnering with us partnership helps me to be able to reach out to more people with multiple broadcasts every day bringing the word of god to people all over the world so i want to encourage you to consider so Consider partnering with me. You can partner with me on PayPal. It's faithmanteaching at gmail.com. It's faithmanteaching at gmail.com. You can partner with us in ministry. And partnership goes along with partners and people that pray for me. There are also people who give their love gift, financial gift, to support the ongoing work of God in this ministry. Through partnership, I continue to have TV broadcasts every day, bringing the word of God, reaching people every day. When people listen to us on radio, on Periscope, on YouTube, on Finish Work TV, or other TV stations and other platforms where my teachings are being aired around the world. So I, I just want to encourage you to consider partnering and partnership is the key to changing more life. And maybe you can reach out to me on Facebook. On Facebook is Faith Man of Weather. It's Faithman of Weather. You can follow my official page. It's Apostle Faithman of Weather. That's my official page. Apostle Faithman of Weather. That's my official page. So you can go like it and stay connected. I love you. Until my next broadcast, please don't forget this. There is greatness in you.